Okay, so let's start the class. So do remember that I have a product test number three. So it's going to be online. Don't miss it because if you miss it for any reason, you will have to take it on paper. Okay, so it will be much harder. So test number three, it's going to be a Tuesday and it's open from now, uh, eight, I think, eight to 11 p.m. It's not a three hours test. I'm just opening three hours to accommodate everyone. It's like one hour test. I think it has like 20 questions and conceptual questions with the right hand rule. So make sure you understand you know, this right hand that we're going to talk about. Make sure you are updated with the homework. Okay. And uh, what else? Okay. So let's start where we start. Um, and before that, you see, I have slides that I have made to summarize everything because electromagnetism and especially magnetism is quite heavy, like remembering everything. So I have a summary there. Yes. April 2nd, yes, Tuesday from 8 to 11. What's your name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth, yes. Okay, so I have these uh, slides in addition to the regular slides just to summarize everything. So let's go for a quick review. So first, at the beginning of the, of the semester, we did electrostatic. Static means that the electric field is not changing with time. It means that the charges are not moving. So in that case, and in that case only, inside a conductor, the electric field is zero, okay? and the potential stays the same. For a change in potential, you need to have an electric field to do work against, right? You have to do work against the electric field to change the potential. So here, again, you have the Van Graaff generator. So if, if this is at 1,000 volt inside, it's going to be also 1,000 volt, and the electric field is zero. The charges always stay on the outside of the conductor. It's going to generate an electric field. So the static electric field, I, I'm saying static, so it does not change with time, always diverge or converge. So it always begins from a plus and it goes to a minus or, or the opposite. If it's negative here, it goes from plus to minus. So an electric field, static electric field, like to diverge or like to converge. So if you are taking um, calculus, vector calculus for those going into uh, more advanced uh, or, or engineering, um, just quickly here, you have one equation. Okay, so these are the Maxwell equations that summarize everything. And you see one of them, is a divergence. So divergence is uh, operator of the electric field is not zero. Okay, because you know the electric field lines, the number of electric field lines, okay, how strong the electric field is depends on, on the charge. Okay, so we did that. Uh, we talked about capacitor. So you have two uh, plates here charged with the same amount of charge. You have a uniform electric field in between. Now, the thing that you have to remember is that if you put a charge inside, the charge does not have to be moving. It can be at rest or it can be moving, it doesn't matter. But in both cases, the charge will accelerate. So one thing to remember, an electric field will accelerate a charge. So it's going to be different from a magnetic field. A magnetic field cannot like make it go faster or make it go slower. It will deflect. So we'll talk that. We'll talk about that. So we did that. This is a Faraday cage. Something here, you see, this is a, an appliance and it's not on. The lamp is not on, but it's plugged here. The voltage here is 120 volt, okay, because the outlet is 120 volt. So it means the whole wire here, because it's a conductor, will be at 120 volt, which means that even though you do not have current flowing, you still have an electric field. Just to tell you that any appliance here that, that is plugged in, 
the outlet, it's going to generate an electric field. Okay, so we are exposed constantly to all those electric fields. And this was the Faraday gauge. We'll talk about that. That's just a review. Here you see, um, I think that, that was one question in test two. The electric field here is always perpendicular to the equipotential. So you have an equipotential here inside also. It's the same potential. The electric field is zero. And you have an accumulation of charges here when it's uh, the curve, the curvature is small. Okay, so we did that already. Okay, so an electric field will accelerate a charge. So if, uh, if you have a vacuum tube, you're going to have an anode, a cathode, cathode that will emit electron because it's going to be very hot. Here you have the anode, so the electron will accelerate and you can visualize this beam of electron. That's the idea behind the old TV. You see this old TV, they had a vacuum tube and you had a so very, very high voltage. You have a beam of electron. That's how we also produce X-ray. Okay, so we have a voltage here that you apply very high voltage. The, uh, the electron will accelerate. So all that QE, uh, uh, Q, 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 V, Q, V, okay, voltage times the charge will turn into kinetic energy, kinetic energy will turn into X ray. Okay, so, okay, we, we use that in a linear accelerator, you can accelerate particle. Okay, so then we talked about magnetic field. So magnetic field does not diverge, never, ever, does not converge, never, ever. It likes to curve. Okay, so lots of conceptual questions for test number three, because I know you cannot look it up, it's harder. So you see the magnetic field circulate, okay, always curve out of the north into the south. Close to it, it's going to be a strong magnetic field. As you move away from it, it's going to be a weaker magnetic field. The magnetic field goes as one over the distance. Okay, um, remember a magnet has two poles, or an electromagnet has two poles, north and south. If you break it in two, you still have two poles. If you break it in two, you still have two poles. So that means that the magnetic field never ever diverge or converge because you do not have a magnetic charge, okay? You do not have a monopole, okay? So uh, one of the equations of Maxwell here, you see e equals to zero. What does that mean? It means that the magnetic field here does not converge or diverge, okay? There is never divergence or convergence. It's always curl. Likes to curve, likes to curve. Okay. Um, what else? You see, you can have those magnets here for the fridge. You still have a north and a south. Okay, so you, so you can see that two magnets interacting with each other, it's for their magnetic field. So here, magnetic field wants to bring them together. Here, they push them out. Here, you have no magnetic field in between. Okay, so we did that. So, Interestingly, you see that an electric dipole, very important for chemistry, so you have a minus here and a plus, you see the electric field in that case will go from the plus into the minus, from the plus into the minus. Okay, it doesn't, doesn't curve, but it goes from the plus to the minus, so that's a configuration of an electric dipole, and we define the dipole moment. Do you remember P, which is a vector? The vector P goes from minus to plus P. Remember? From minus to plus. And it was equals to Q times the distance between them. You see, you see the vector here? Okay. Um, that's because in chemistry, you know, those, um, scale is so small, so small that we, we don't talk about the distance between the plus and the minus. Okay. So we just define a new vector P. Likewise, um, you're going to see you're going to have the same configuration for a magnet. Okay, so from plus to minus. And you can define the vector here. We're going to call that mu. Okay, and that vector is actually, is like you see my, my hand here. You see my right hand 
yeah that will be the north and that will be the south so that vector here we call that the magnetic dipole mu we're gonna talk about it more it's very important like mri for example i sent you a video so you have to find the link here so that vector here goes from south to plus it's going to be very important for what's coming up and it's called a magnetic uh, dipole here you have the electric dipole but you see the configuration is the same okay so then we that, that's also very important here you see you have a magnet and you see that you can have those little compass showing you showing you which way it's going to flow from north to south however instead of having a compass you can have a piece of iron very small so it's called iron filing little piece of iron that you sparkle uh, uh, sparkle all over sparkle 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 all over so this little piece will get magnetized they will be acted upon by a torque such as it will align with the magnetic field so you see the magnetic field at any point in space you can define a vector of magnetic field tangent to the line so if you take your right hand like this you see let's say this is the north this is the south okay let's say over there i have a north a huge magnet but north here i have another huge magnet or an electromagnet but it's the south so that little magnet here or oh, that little piece of iron could be a piece of iron get magnetized and it wants to align itself with the magnetic field got that now south there's a torque same thing with the electric field we have those little seeds that get uh, polarized and aligned with the electric field so same idea inside the earth typical uh, question here you see that the geographic north is actually the magnetic south and you have those little compasses it will get here show you which way is the north you see that close to florida the magnetic field is always parallel to the ground and higher altitude it goes like this at an angle only at the equator it goes in okay so why do we have uh light um, night light northern northern north light um bo uh, aurora borealis it's because the the solar wind or all those charged particles is going to interact with the atmosphere and you have a beautiful display of color so again very important to understand if you have a magnet and we're going to see electricity is also the source for magnetism is mag electricity is moving charge if you have magnetism it's because there is a moving charge so here we talk about that if you have a loop of current and i, I have this so you can visualize where is my loop of current so let's see you have a loop of current here you see can you all see the loop of current here right so let's say it's a coil okay so you have wi uh, wire going around and around and around and around, and around. it's all insulated and then here i connect to a power supply the current is running this way so you take your right hand that will be the north and that's going to be the south can you see it huh someone make a comment i don't i didn't share it what do you say? So you have your loop of current, okay? Uh, loop of current here. You take your right hand like this. That's going to be the north and that's going to be the south. Like this. It's very important uh, for conceptual question. So it means if you have a loop of current, okay? So that loop of current, for example, could be the nucleus of hydrogen, okay? That will... Um, rotate spin so it has a magnetic moment so you have a loop of current here what he wants to do he wants always to align with the magnetic field got that okay so if you are doing an mri you are inside a huge magnetic field and all the soft tissues have nuclei of uh, hydrogen hydrogen uh, nuclei like proton 
those photons, they have a spin, okay? It's like they rotate. So those little photons will behave like a, a magnet. So if you apply a magnetic field, they want to align themselves, so they will rotate to align themselves with the magnetic field. Got that? And then if you send a pulse, a radio pulse, okay? In the MRI machine, what you are doing, you're exciting them, okay? So it means they go to a higher level of energy. And then when they come back, they're going to burn out radio waves from inside to outside. So that's a MRI, okay? It's a, a, you, you are highlighting your body from inside out with radio wave, but it's fine because it's not as bad as PET scan. So anyway. So what's the idea? So from here that will be north into south, that's a magnetic field. You have these little uh, hydrogen nuclei. They want to align themselves with the magnetic field this way. Okay, pay attention, that's gonna be on the test number three. You excite them with pulses of radio wave. So they're going to go to a higher level of energy. They don't like that because this is north, this is north. And then when they come back, they relax, they have a hangover, and they burn out. Okay, it's like they're throwing up, they are throwing up uh, radio waves back, back radio waves from inside out. Okay, so this is low energy, this is high energy. Is that clear? So that's MRI in a nutshell. Okay, and then we talk 1820, the experiment of Ørsted. So that's also a question in the, um, the test. You see the current is going this way. So you take your right hand, the thumb, the thumb is the current. So the current is flowing this way. The magnetic field is gonna rotate, rotate. It has the direction of rotation which is shown here. Okay, so you go into the screen, so that will be, uh, what is it, clockwise. Into the screen, clockwise. Is that clear? Uh, I have another app here to show you that, that I have found. How do you distinguish the south and north pole if it's going around in a circle? So th there is, a, there is um, so in, in as, to, to get a North Pole and a South Pole, you have to take the wire and to make a loop out of it, okay? So here, there is, there is no South Pole or South Pole. It's just the magnetic field is going to rotate. It's going to curl, right? So if you have a little magnet here, you see, it's going to be um, acted upon by a torque and it will, uh, it will rotate. So close to it, you see, it's going to be very strong. And then as you move away, it go one over the distance. Okay? So you always have a magnetic field curling around a wire. So I have here another summary. No? Oh, here. So when you have a solenoid coming up, so here again, if it's a straight wire, you see the magnetic field like to uh, circle around. Okay, to make those circles here, like this. Is that clear? And um, I forgot to tell you something. Oh, yes, let's go back to Maxwell equation. Um, you have that here. For those who are taking vector uh, calculus, you see that means the curve. So B, B likes to curve. And it's curling around the current here. Yeah, that's what it means. It's curling around the current. So that's another Maxwell equation. Okay, so the source for magnetism is moving charges. So in the outer core, you have some motion going on like this. So north will be at the geographic south. So this is in the outer core. I, I don't know if it's uh, here, it's explained if it's nickel or iron, some type of ions. Now, if you have a solenoid, okay? So if you have a loop, loop of current, again, a loop of current like a solenoid, you see, then you have a north and a south, like we showed last time I did a demo. 
So in that case, you see, that will be the north and that will be the south. So the magnetic field comes out of the north into the south. How do I know which one is the north, which one is the south? I go like this, and it's going to show it to me. So for the pop quiz, I think there you have one conceptual question here. This is a magnet. So these are electrons. Okay, don't don't look at this. But see, this is the north. So that one, that one will be the south. So which way it's flowing? It's flowing. You, you take your right hand. It's flowing. Um, I mean, to, to you like this. Okay, I don't know which one is like down. Okay, the reason you see the thing going up is because the electron, but the positive charge, so the current goes down. You see that? Do you all agree with that? Okay, so that's your coil. This is the north and this is the south. Okay? So, so is basically a bunch of ring charges. Yeah, so it's going, it's um, it's a, a coil, a solenoid is just a coil. So it takes wire, you go around and around and around and around and around and around, and you connect that to a power supply. The, the wires here have to be insulated because if it's not insulated, then it's like you have just one loop of current. So, with regard to the straight wire, the Magnetic field and the electric field are inverse. Um, right. What do you mean? When I have a straight wire, it's magnetic fields and then current. Yes. And then with the solenoid, it would be current and magnetic field. Right. So for, for the, the the straight wire, the thumb is the yeah. electric uh, the current. This is the magnetic field. For a solenoid, is the opposite. This one is the current, and this one is the north. Right? Is that clear? Um, okay, so you have your solenoid here. So again, you take your right hand. Oh, by the way, you can do that experiment as a demo. You see you have water, uh, water current flowing here this this uh, wire you need to get has need to have enamel so insulation and then you take your right hand if it goes like this you have the north here and the south there and if you put a core here it it means that it will amplify the magnetic field it has to be made of soft iron okay so it's it's good to review so again, if you have a solenoid here, so the current goes from here to there, it's going to have a magnetic field, so it will behave like a bar magnet. You can see here, I think it's also a pop quiz, you see you have just one big loop of current, okay? So the, the strength of the magnetic field will depend, and that's going to be the next unit on the strength of the current, but also the area and the number of loops. So it's proportional. So if you have twice the loop, you have twice the magnetic field, twice the area, twice the magnetic field, twice the current, twice the magnetic field. So you take your right hand, okay, it's hard to see here, but uh, from plus, so you see the current is flowing this way, so that will be your north and that will be your south. So that will behave like a bar magnet. Again, if you have your, uh, I don't know where it went, okay? So that will be south, north. So it will behave like a bar magnet. Okay, everyone? Uh, very useful here because you can control magnetism. You can pick up junk, move it, turn off, boom. Right? So it has a lot of uh, application. Here, that's what we call the Helmholtz coils. So it's a special configuration. So if you have two electromagnets here, okay, so these are electromagnets parallel to each other, they will behave like the capacitor. Do you remember if you have two plates, the magnet, the, the electric field is constant, uniform between them. You can get the same thing here if you have two coils. And um, 
they need to have the same number of turns and the distance between them has to be equal to the radius of the coil. So if you go to a lab, you're going to have a lot of uh, uh, application, like uh, experiment that you can do. Is that true? Okay, so um, you see, magnetic field always curves, gets makes loops. So we did that. So even though this appliance is off, you see, this is 120 volt uh, voltage, so 120 volt. The conductor has the same voltage all over. So it's going to produce an electric field. Even though it's not on, if you turn it on, you're going to also produce a magnetic field. So it's all over, okay? It goes inside the body and everything. We don't know the consequence really. So, okay, so we, we stopped here. I don't know where I stopped, so that's my thing here. So lots of application. So okay, <laughs> now uh, let's go back to the right hand, another one. So because a wire is going to produce an electric field, if you, you have a piece of wire, okay, so only that little piece here, the size of that width, a piece of wire inside a magnetic field, it will be acted upon by a force. We call that the magnetic force. Okay, so the same way you have a charge inside the electric field, it's going to be acted upon by an electric force equals to QE. In that case, it's going to be also acted upon by a force, but that force is very special. You see, this is the magnetic field from north to south. Okay, this is the current flowing, and that little fragment or segment of the wire will be acted upon by a force. What I want you to see is that the magnetic field and the current will be inside the same plane, and the force will be perpendicular to it. So what we have here is a cross product. So let me uh, try to illustrate that, because I know students always have a hard time. So everyone has the right, uh, right hand. Okay, I do it with the right hand, you can do it with your hand. There is a different way to do it. So okay, so this is the current. So if this is the current, and this is the magnetic field, so you see they are in the same plane, they can be perpendicular to each other or they can make an angle with each other. That will be the force, the third uh, finger. So this is called a, a cross product, IBF. So memorize, IBF, not IBM, IBF. Okay? And uh, you, you, need, you need to do like be flexible. If you are flexible, everything will be good. So this is called a uh, cross product. So if you have I and then B and they are perpendicular to each other, you're going to have the force this way. So X, Y, Z. Do you all see? If they are perpendicular to each other, I'm going to have the maximum force, right? Now, as I decrease the angle between that I and B, the force is going to decrease. And then I close up, still in the same plane, the force is still perpendicular, but it's going to decrease even more. When the current and B are parallel to each other, the force will be equals to zero. Very good. Okay, because in the cross product, you remember there was a sign. Sign of zero is zero. And then I open again. So I'm going to have perpendicular. So that will be the maximum. And then I can do the increase again the angle larger than 90 degrees and when I get to 180 they are anti-parallel the force is zero so if the current is anti-parallel to B okay there is no force is that clear so this is uh, here I have a very nice slide you have a current here carrying wire and that piece of the wire is inside the magnetic field. It makes an angle between them, but 
you see they are in the same plane. So I take I, B, and that will be the force acting on the wire. Is that clear? So sometimes it's tricky to see which way the force is going to go in, but the, the equation for it okay, will be like for a cross product, it's going to be the magnetic force will be the current times the length of the wire times the magnetic field times the angle between them. So if the angle is zero, sine of zero is zero. If the angle is 180, so I is anti parallel to B, okay, sine of 180 is zero. Maximum when the angle is 90 degrees. Is that clear? So I show you. Um, it's called Lorentz force, magnetic force. Let's let's predict here. Take your right hand. Let's predict what's going to happen. Which way the the thing here? So you see here, you connect your power supply. The current is going to flow here, go back to here. So the question is: Is it going to the left or is it going to the right? So you see, this is the north and this is the south. And uh, the current is flowing in these directions. You take your three fingers. So if you are looking at this one, uh, the current is going toward you. So which way is going to go? Toward the power supply. Toward the power supply. So this way. So the current is going this way. So the current is going toward you. Yes. Can you see over there? Toward you. Magnetic field goes down, or, or is the force? Oh, yeah, it's coming to the right. Right, right? I told you it's like yoga with the hands. You need to be flexible. You have different ways to do it, okay? So the current is going this way towards you. Magnetic field is going down. Of course, it's going that way, okay? X, Y, Z, I, B, F. Uh, let's see. Turn on. Boom. Do you see that? So you see the, the current and the magnetic field, they are in the same plane. And the force here is perpendicular to the, to the plane. That's why we need math. Okay. That will be translated with a cross product. If you reverse the current, it's going to be in the other direction, right? Take your right hand. Is that clear? Um, now, there is different way to do it. You don't have to do it. I, I like to use my fingers because otherwise I forget, but you can use this way. You, you have different right hand rules. You can do it this way. You can say this is I, this is B. The force will come out of your uh, form, so it's a different way to do it. But um, that will be um, the force. So let me show you. Um, MRI, uh, yeah. So this is a horseshoe magnet, but it's a special one because you have a very, very, very strong magnetic field. So it will be in this direction, okay? Into the page or out of the page. And then the current is going this way. So the force will be up or down. Do you agree? Okay, depending which way is the current and which way is the magnetic field. The force will have to be up or down. So you can do that uh, experiment if you are not scared. A little bit scared of a car battery, but should not be. So this is very strong. Okay, he has to turn the switch. Boom! You see that? Isn't that amazing? 
Okay, so it's the two magnetic fields from the wire, from the magnet, interacting with each other. And at the end, he reversed the current. Did you see he reverse here? He reversed the direction, and now the force is down. Huh? Isn't that cool? Um, you have the same thing I here. Here, a large magnet, south pole, north pole, so the field is pointing up. And then I have a big, uh, well, copper tube, which is connected to the wires here. So this way, this way. When I connect these here, electricity will flow through this guy, through the red, through the copper tube, and then up through ground, and then back up. So we'll have electricity flowing this way, magnetic field pointing up, we expect the force. See, this way, field up. And sure enough, isn't that cool? We get an inward force. So you see, this is the north, right? So the current is this way, magnetic field is up, and the force is this way. Okay, so very quickly, I can show you a demo. If it wants to work, you can do the same. You can do more than uh, one one extra credit because there is so many things you can do so i have my power supply because last time i did it with the other class and uh, i drain i kill my battery because it's a short so now i'm gonna drain electricity from the outside if I again. so yes i have a Aluminium. You see, I have a piece of aluminium, so you see how easy it is. You just need to hack, to hack like a charger, like a, uh, to AC to DC. This is 5 volts. And uh, I'm going to have a wire because that way it will add some resistance. Remember, a wire has some resistance, especially when it's so thin, so small. Can you see here? It's annoying. See here? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to make a short. Okay, I cannot do that too long. So if I have my magnet here, it's a neodymium magnet. Do you see it moving? You see? It's vibrating. You see? Little pulse? Huh? Isn't that cool? I don't touch, okay? I don't cheat you, look. Uh, it's getting up. Ay, ay, ay. It's a, um, it's a shot, so you can do that. I can, I can, ah, you stop that. I can try here too. So you, you see you have a horseshoe magnet, horseshoe magnet. Okay, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have a bar, like um, a segment, a wire segment here, if he wants to not uh, move. Okay, this is very delicate. Okay, so the I, B, F. So I, let's say if it's this way, B is down. So the, the force should be in this direction, right? So let's see, should we do it uh, like this? Has to be exactly there. Bon. If it, if it doesn't work, it's fine. Did I uncover? Because it has to be exactly inside the magnetic field. Oh, uh, okay, but you understand the idea, okay? I'm not going to push on it. It works, you just have to take more time. Okay, so agree that will be the cross product I, B, F. 
if the angle gets smaller, the force decreases, 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 get to zero. Okay, so that's why we need uh, we need the math. Okay, a cos b will be equals to c. Okay, you have the magnitude will be equals to this, or you can do it this way if you want to find the vector. Okay, so example here. Yeah. Do, do it with your three uh, fingers. The current is going toward you. You see, the magnetic field goes down from north to south. So the force will be in that direction. Is that clear? So in this case, it's like a um, So you like to feel this thumb. No, 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 no. So here we are using the right hand for a different uh, reason. So you have three ways to use your uh, right hand. So if you go back to my uh, big uh, ideas, see, did you say right hand? So you can use it here when you have a wire, straight wire, the magnetic field is going to circulate around. So that's one way. Second way will be different. Okay, so you have a solenoid here. The current is going around like this. That will be the thumb will be the magnetic field. So it's still the same right hand, but not the same purpose. If you have a loop of current here, yeah, you go around with your hand. That will be the thumb will be the north. So that will be north. That will be south. That will be north. That will be south. Finally, you can use it for a third reason. So if a, a, a segment of current here yeah, is going this way. That will be the field, that will be the force. Okay, so the, the, the right hand can be used for three different uh, things. Okay, so that's why I made the summary because it's um, sometimes it can be confusing. Okay, let, let's try to do this one. So remember from last semester, a vector has a tail and has a head. When the vector is in the ball, like this, you're going to see a cross. Yeah, it's not finished. It's missing the other, the other direction. But if the vector is going toward you, you see a dot. So that means the magnetic field here is in the screen. So if the current is up, so I, B, F, the current is up, up, uh, magnetic field is in the screen. Where is the force? Uh, wait, the magnetic field is in the screen, right? The current is up. Magnetic field is in the screen. Where is the force? To the left, to the left, right? To the left, to the left, to the right, to the right, to the left. If the current is down, the force will be to the Right, you see, I, B, F, okay? So what about here? What about situation A? So what does it mean, the dot? The dot means the current is going toward you. What does it mean, the cross? The magnetic field is going away from you. So that means the current is going this way, the magnetic field is going that way, they are anti-parallel. Can you have a force? No, there is no magnetic force. What about here? The current is going toward you, um, the magnetic field is going toward you, so they are parallel. Is there a force? No. What about here? Can you decide? So the I, B, F. The current is going toward you. So it's like a, a, a wire toward you, toward you. The magnetic field is going to the uh, left. So toward me, to the left, where is the force? Down. Okay, so the magnetic field is down. So we have a suspended wire like this. Well, maybe it's connected to power supply, probably. So you have the magnetic field down and gravity is down. So it's not going to be in equilibrium. What about here? The magnetic field is... Um, so magnetic field is, the current is this way, 
magnetic field is yes to the right so the force is um so the wire will be in equilibrium between gravity and the magnetic field okay you just need to be able to use your right hand you can do this i b f so make sure you know how to do it because for the test, you know, I like those conceptual questions. Very hard to, to cheat with that, even with chat GPT. Okay, so the unit for magnetic field is the Tesla, and you have a subunit which is called the Gauss, 10 to the negative 4. Okay, are you are you sure? Everyone is fine? Do you understand? Uh, if you if you miss the class because you just came in and you are late, make sure you catch up with the video because those conceptual questions are not easy. Bless you. It takes so long to, to start uh, 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 IDK, I don't know why. Okay, so again, uh, no, again, are you watching, guys? You see here the current, um, for example, if the current is going toward you, toward you, that will be the magnetic field, you know, going this way. Okay, the current is going toward you. If you have a solenoid, so you take that wire and you make a loop. So you're going to force those feed lines to go around the loop and you have yourself a electromagnet. So that will be the south here and that will be the north. So it means the current is going this way. Okay. So the black. Yes. Okay. So black here usually means south. That will be uh, north. So the compass inside you have a small uh, dipole. It's like a magnetic dipole. Okay. It's like a small magnet. It will uh, feel the magnetic field, and it will align with the magnetic field lines. Okay. And then you have see without those up, it's very hard to. Uh, make sense of it. Okay, same thing here. What do you think here? So the the uh, this is a suspended uh, wire. You see, only the things that you have to understand. Only the the segment inside the magnetic field will be acted upon by a force, right? So you take your fingers, and that will be your plus. So plus, 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 are you with me here? Plus, plus, plus. The magnetic field is down, down, down. Bravo, inward. Right? And you change here, you can uh, switch, switch the battery. If you switch the battery, it will move this way. Isn't that cool? Physics doesn't make sense unless you, you do the experiment. We we don't do enough experiment in my in my in my opinion. Okay, let's do just the uh, let's let's do this one. Let's do the problem. We can help each other, talk to each other. Okay, so here it's very easy. Numerical, uh, I don't know if I, we're going to do everything. So other, again, those who are late, you really have to catch up the video. It's not that easy. You have to read your book, of course, of course. So the magnetic force will be I, the current, times the segment inside the magnetic field, times the magnetic field, times the angle. Okay, and the angle is between 
the current and B. So it has a direction, so I'm going to make it as a vector, and that means uh, angle. The unit is Newton. This is in amp. This is in meters. This is in Tesla. And the force is in Newton. So you can say mathematically F equals I L cross uh, B. So it's a vector. Okay, so let's do this one. So you have the force, you have the current, and you have the length. Okay, so the length is here. That's to be the current. That will be the force, right? So it's just a numerical application. The current is 12, 0 0.3 uh, B, we don't know. And here we have sine 90. So B equals Are you doing it, helping each other? It's going to be... I found 6.7 times 10 to the negative 4, uh, 5. Tesla, did you get that? Okay. Now, it's nice to have in 10 to the negative 4. So I'm going to have some... I'm, I'm going to divide by 10 to the negative 4. I'm going to get 6, 0 0.67 times 10 to the negative 4 Tesla. Why? Because you see, this is the subunit Gauss. Okay, so 1 Gauss is 10 to the negative 4 Tesla. So that will be 0 0.67 Gauss. Okay, so it's just a change of unit. Now, the magnetic field of the Earth, some, someone asked the question, you know, is very weak. So if you have a magnet next to it, it's the magnet that wins. Okay, the magnetic field is, of the Earth is 0 0.5 Gauss. Okay? Yes. Oh, because it's... Um, Oh, because it says perpendicular to the feet. Good question. Perpendicular, okay? So that's why it's 90 degrees. Uh, number two. Okay, so everyone, you're doing it. So that will be your uh, current. So first thing, you identify the physical quantity. So that will be 0 0.2 meters. Magnetic field here is 40 times 10 to the negative 3 Tesla. If the wire is perpendicular to the field, that means theta equals 90 degrees. Okay? So force equals I L cross B. So force will be equals to the current, which is 1.5 times 0 0.2 times magnetic field 40 times 10 to the negative 3 times sine 90 degrees. And you get... Huh? You should get 1.2 times 10 to the negative 3 Newton. Did you get that? Sine 90 is 1. Do you all agree? People are still have a hard time to recover from the change, change of time, which is stupid. Oh, by the way, today is the equinox. Did you know that? It's the equinox. It's the vernal equinox. It's when the, the, the length for the day and the length for the night is the same. Cool, right? And uh, let me show you. Uh, equino we are the vernal equinox today, today. So 12 hours of night, 12 hours of day.
you see we are in the equinox here you see that means uh, 12 hours day 12 hours night it's today it changed from from year to year so the zodiac uh, uh, constellation the zodiac sign is a pisces okay and but in few hundred years from now it will be in aquarius because you know the the earth is wobbling so that's why you have the song, the age of Aquarius, the dawn of Aquarius. I don't know if you know the song, maybe it was a very famous song for the musical hair. Okay, it was in the 1967 when everyone was very rebellious and the age of Aquarius was a very famous song. So that's, that's why we are going from Pisces to Aquarius. It's supposed to be an era of love and peace. And let me laugh. <laughs> we are not, not definitively not in the era of uh, era of love and peace, okay? Without war, which which is not really the case. Okay, that was a tangent. You can celebrate today the equinox. And uh, let's do this one quickly. Yeah, you have to listen to the song. Okay, it's a very, very famous song if you are into music. The the dawn of Aquarius, I think it's called. I have a quick question. Yes. Tesla is newton ampere, newton per ampere times meters. Yes, yeah, so it's newton per area meters. Per area. Mm -hmm. The a uh, no sorry no 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 a is for Amp. This this is the unit for amp. So newton per. No 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 because this one is at the denominator. Okay, it's a good question. By the way, that's how the Tesla was uh, defined. The unit was defined using the magnetic force, the current, and the length of of the wire. Number three. Are you doing number three? Uh, is that number three or what? I've, I'm lost. What is the direction magnitude of the force that upward directed magnetic field? So, okay, so the magnetic field is going this way on the north flowing. So I'm, I'm deciding that north is here, south is here. I, I guess this is the bond. Okay, so you have you have now the current going this way. So up, you have the magnetic field here because maybe you have a magnet. So let's see, you have a, like a magnet here. This is north, the north of the magnet. This is the south. So it's making a magnetic field here, looping. We don't care. And you have a current flowing um, north. So this is your current inside your magnetic field. Are you doing it? So this is your current here. Of course, it's gonna be um, connected somewhere to a power supply. Okay, it has to make a loop, so you have a power supply somewhere. It's just for the exercise. So let's find, first we're gonna find the magnitude and then we'll figure out what's the, direction of the force right so the force equals the current do we have the current yes 10 times the length of the wire which is 0 0.15 times the magnetic field which is 2 times 10 to the negative 3 and they are perpendicular to each other so that will be times 1 Okay, so the magnetic force will be equals to one zero zero three. Who said that? Yes, Matthias. Ah, Matthias. Three times ten to the negative three newton, right? And so take your right hand. Tell me. If the force is out of the screen or in the screen, out of the screen, out of the screen, in, out. Yes, you're right. 
towards you, right? I, V, F. Do you all agree with that? So how we show that? We're going to make a, uh, a dot. We're going to make a dot like this. That will be your force towards you. So it's going to be deflected. OK? Uh, OK, so this one I was going to skip, but you see the magnetic of the Earth is 0 0.5 Gauss, which is 5 times 10 to the negative 5 Tesla. Let's do the last one, this one. So if, uh, if you came late, like 30 minutes late, for example, make sure you catch up, OK, because we talked a lot about conceptual questions. It's not easy. Make sure you go over your um, textbook as well, right? Thank you. <laughs> uh, so you have a wire. So that will be your current. I, I don't know how they suspend that wire. I'm not sure how it works, but somewhere there is a plus here and somewhere there is a, I mean, there is a, a power supply. So that will be the length, 0 0.4, and the current here is 6 amps, and, and that will be the weight, okay? So weight is mg. So that means the, the weight is down, so this is my down, okay? So that will be the weight. And the weight is 0 0.35 Newton. And I want to balance it with a... Uh, magnetic field uh, a, a, a magnetic force right so the magnetic force has to be up is that clear because uh, they cancel each other out so that means the magnetic force has to be equals to 0 0.35 do you agree that's all there is to it so 0 0.35 equals the current which is 6 times 0 0.4 times b they are perpendicular to each other uh, sine 90 huh? yes you're right tesla okay So it's called the Lorentz force. You call it magnetic force. Yes, magnetic force. Okay, so a lot of applications. So for example, the way a speaker works, you see it's connected to audio system. So let's say you are listening to music with a given frequency. Okay, let's say you, you listen to a pure tone like uh, 40, 40 hertz, that will be uh, A4 uh, above middle C, A above middle C. I don't know, I, I'm not a singer, but anyway, let's say you are listening to music, so the current is going gonna, is gonna to oscillate with the same frequency as the sound of the music you are listening to. So it means if you are listening to 440 hertz, just a pure tone, the, the current is going to oscillate at 440 hertz, okay? So the current is going to go around like this. It's going to make a loop and 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 a loop. So you see, you have a solenoid here. And that solenoid is going to be pushed and pulled, pushed and pulled, pushed and pulled by the permanent magnet, okay, with the same frequency. You see why? Because the, the, the wire is going into the screen, so into the screen. So in that case, the magnetic field is up. So into the screen, magnetic field is up. So the, the force, the magnetic force will be in this direction. Do you all agree? And here you have a cone. The cone is very soft. So it's going to be pushed and pulled, pushed and pulled, pushed and pulled at the same frequency. So it's going to make a sound wave, okay? It's going to push and pull, push and pull the air molecule. That will get to your ear, your eardrum. It's going to be pushed and pulled, and that's how you can hear a sound. 
Now, the thing to understand is that each wire here, each loop will be pushed. So if you want to find the magnetic force, you will need to multiply by the number of loop. Okay? And uh, the wire, the length of the wire will be the distance around because it makes a, a, a circle. So the length of the wire will be 2 pi r. So the equation for the speaker, okay, you can think about that. Okay, the, the magnetic force will be the number of loop. Okay, each loop has a length inside the magnetic field of 2 pi r. So that will be 2 pi r times the current times the magnetic field. That will be the force. So I have a demo just to show you. You see here, what you have is a... Uh, uh, it's a speaker, obvious. See, it's easy. And uh, you see, this is very soft. I don't know if you can see here, it's very soft here. So what you have here, if you look in the back, you have a permanent magnet around here. And inside, I don't know if you can see, you can see it through here. But inside you have a coil, okay? So it's the coil that's going to be pushed and pulled, pushed and pulled because of the permanent magnet that will push and pull, push and pull this coil here. See that? So if I, I don't have music, but just by turning on and off. See that? Can you see it moving? So what is cool if you have two speakers, like an audio system, and you, you want to make a joke, you know, you reverse the connection, so one will be in and the other, the other one will be out. Okay. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So like uh, if you are mad at your plate, uh, right, you can do that, you can reverse the connection, mm -hmm. and that will be very... Uh, Okay, so that will be the equation here, and uh, we can do that very quickly. You see, this is your audio system. So, by the way, audio system has to work with AC. You like my computer here. You have to turn that into DC. But audio system, of course, you you want to lower the voltage. So usually maybe it's six volt, something like this. But of course, you don't want to turn that into DC because otherwise you're not going to have the frequency, so you cannot hear your sound. So here it's going to go back, uh, push and pull, push and pull at the same frequency as the music that you are listening. And any music will be a um, sum of sine waves, right? So very smart. Okay, so just let's do it very quickly here. Let's, let's apply this equation. So the magnetic force add up because on each loop here, you have the magnetic force. So the magnetic force will be the number of loop times the current times 2 pi r uh, times uh, the magnetic field. Typical magnetic field from a magnet, 0 0.1 Tesla. So it's twice the magnetic field from the Earth, right? So the magnetic field will be 55 times... 2R and they are giving you the uh, diameter. So diameter is exactly 2R. So it's going to be 0 0.0025 times pi uh, times the current. I forgot the current 2 times 0 0.1. Okay, so the force is, are you all doing it? 86 Newton. Okay. Do you all agree? And um, find their acceleration. So acceleration F equals MA. 
So if you want to find the acceleration, you divide the force by the mass, right? So it's going to be 0 0.086 divided by the mass 0 0.02. The unit will be meter per second square. Okay? Uh, are we here? So the there is a mistake here. There is a zero. Magnetic field. It's the force that we produce. Yeah, it's it's um it's a vibration. We we force the air to vibrate. Okay. But to record the voice. Then you're going to use a system like this, but reverse, right? So it's being pushed and pulled, pushed and pulled. You're going to make a current with the same frequency, and then you can... Right? Um, let, let's do... So this one is the same, so not... Uh, okay, let's do number one quickly. So you have the magnetic field. Let's just um, uh, uh, writing. Let's just write the equation, even if we don't we don't write the answer. So diameter is zero point zero two five one two three, and the power supply is fifteen volts. So I guess for an audio system is about fifteen volts. You can look look in the back of your audio system. And that will be the resistance. So the force will be the current times uh, the number of loop times 2 pi r times the magnetic field. How can we find the current? Very good, Ohm's law, right? 15 divided by 8. By the way, the, for test number 3, remember that the power energy consumed per second by uh, ohmic components or by your resistance you can write that by v square over r of r i square okay p equals vi is always true this is just for a uh, ohmic component that was a tangent okay so the force will be 15 divided by a times 250 times uh, 0 0.025 times pi times uh, 0.15. What did you get? Newton? Okay, thank you. Okay. So th the next one is easy, it's just to understand that sometimes the angle between the wire and B don't have to be equals to 90s, 90 degrees. So again, let's just write down the equation. So the length is 0 0.25 meters. That will be your magnetic field. So F equals 15 times 0 0.85 times 0 0.25. If the angle is 90 degrees, that will be times 1. If the angle is not 90 degrees, then you have to multiply by the sine of 45 degrees. Now, if the angle is zero, the force will be equals to zero. Okay, so in that case, the force will be uh, 3.2 Newton. In that case, it's going to be 2.3 Newton and equals to zero. So that's that's the cross product, right? So if uh, the two vectors are perpendicular to each other, I have a maximum. And as I close, 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 here I get to zero. So 
So I leave that for the pop quiz. Okay, a lot of applications, for example, I don't know if those boats are still around, I have no idea, but it uses that magnetic force. So underneath here, you have a magnet, like a huge magnet, like a cylinder magnet, like this, like, um, and this one, you see, has, oh, so that's a magnet underneath. So you have the north here, that will be the south. So you have a magnetic field. And then here you have, it has to be working with electricity. So, uh, so you have two electrodes, plus and minus. So you can have the water is uh, made of iron. So it's a conductor, so current can flow. So I, B, F. So there will be a magnetic force applied to the water. So then it's Newton third law. For every action, you have a reaction. If the water, the system, uh, the, the boat is like a system is pushing on the water back, the water is pushing in the opposite direction. So you can use instead of doing IBF, you can use this method here. It works the same. Yes. Uh, uh, yes, so you, you, it, it is a capacitor, uh, but it's, it's not for that it's used. But yes, between here and there, you have two electrodes, yes. You, you have a capacitor if you want, so you have an electric field, so the electric field is pushing, cooling the, the water molecules. Okay, so calculus part, remember that any surface, okay, you can find its orientation with the unit vector here. So for example, you don't have to worry too much about it. If you have a loop of glass, you see I'm very proud because I found that. You see that loop here? So you go around, okay, that, that form here will show you the north, but it's also perpendicular to the area, okay? So that will be the vector, uh, the unit vector here, n, the normal. It's called the normal, right? Because it's perpendicular to the area, and it's used to 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 um, describe the orientation of the area. Does it make sense? Is the area this way, or is it that way, or this is that way? So you use that vector because it has components. Once you know which way that vector is going, so you know where is the area. Is that clear? Okay. So here, again, if you have a loop of currents, this is very important to understand. If you have a loop of currents, you go with your right hand, the thumb, the thumb will show you, will show you the north. Okay. So that little vector here, we call that the magnetic dipole mu. Okay, so it just show you which way is the north. So it's like a bar magnet. The magnitude, the magnitude of mu, it's not u, it's mu, it has a little tail here, will be the current times the area. Okay, if you have a dipole in a magnetic field, so again, if this is north, this is south. So you have north, south, and you have this little dipole, it's not happy here. It wants to rotate, to align itself with the magnetic field. So south uh, face north and the north face south. Is that clear? And that's how MRI works, uh, work in a, in a, in a nutshell. Uh, MRI in a nutshell. Here, so we have soft tissues in the body. Okay, so MRI is just for soft tissues. It doesn't have a good resolution, but in our soft tissues, we have water, lots of water. That's why it's soft. And um, so it's a lot of hydrogen. Hydrogen, they have a spin. If you take a chemistry class advanced, they have a spin. It's like they, they are behaving like a top. As long as you have a charge moving, it's gonna create a magnetic field. So all those little nuclei will behave like small magnet small loop of current. If there is no magnetic field applied, they will be random. 
in all directions. All of a sudden, you apply a magnetic field because you are inside the MRI. So they want to align themselves with the magnetic field from top to bottom. And then you excite them with a pulsing radio waves. You excite them because it will be the right frequency. Okay, they go to a higher level of energy. Okay, they get high. So what's going to happen to the loop? So it's going to rotate to an excited state, state against the electric field. And then when it comes back, okay, it's relaxing, it's going to burn out radio wave from inside out. Isn't that cool? And that uh, connects to your uh, chemistry class. Yes. A is the area of the... Yes. Yes, so it will be the area area of your loop. Now, it doesn't have to be a, a circle, it could be a square. Okay, you, you can have a loop like this. You see, I have a loop. Can you all see over there? You see my loop here? Okay, so if the current is flowing, that will be my magnetic dipole, that will be my U going up. No, south, if it's flowing this way. So, two pi r times. So, in that case, it will be the length times the width, okay, times the current, i a. If it's, if it's a circle, it will be pi r squared times the current. Okay, so I can have like it's, it's kind of a rectangle. Okay, so very quickly, now I will go back to those uh, loops. See Maxwell equations, you have the differential form and the integral form. Uh, let's go back to here. Okay, let's do MRI. So you see those little nuclei, they are at a lower level of energy, and you can excite them. Okay, excite them. And okay, let's say I'm gonna make a stronger field here. So most of them. Most of them, they are in their lower state of energy. So most of them, they want to align with the magnetic field. So that's, that's your MRI. You are inside the big uh, electromagnet, you see? But because it's quantum physics, some of them will be excited, you know, they don't want to hang out, to, to relax. Now, if I, if I have the right frequency, Okay, so I, I'm sending some radio waves here. I have the right frequency. Boom. I'm forcing them to be in a higher level of energy. And when they relax, okay, they're going to burp out radio wave from inside out. And all over you, you have a donut. You have inside a donut, which is made of sensors that will collect those photons, radio wave photons. And you have a tomography, you have an image of the inside. Uh, uh, yes, they detect, but not, not that. But yes, they use radio waves, radio astronomy. It, it was coming from the center of the Milky Way, the supermassive black hole using radio waves. Um, OK. Okay, I'm, I'm going to do something that I really don't like to do. I'm going to put a tumor, God forbid. Okay. And uh, so then you need to find the right frequency. Sometimes it's hard. So it's like a resonance frequency. You see where the tumor is? You have a lot of uh, nuclei. And, and they will burp out those photons, and that's how you can detect the tumor. Uh, no mass. Okay, so you, you get the idea, you're gonna have more, more photons being um, burped out from the tumor than anywhere else, and that's how you can detect it. The resolution for MRI is very low, but it's safe because it's radio waves. 
If you want to improve the resolution, you have to get a CAT scan or a PET scan. Best resolution is a PET scan. PET scans are dangerous, kind of, uh, because it's gamma rays, photons. Okay, so that was uh, the, this idea of, uh, you see, a loop. If you have a loop, um, you're gonna inside the magnetic field, you're gonna have a, a, a torque. Okay, we're gonna talk about torque. Again, if you have a loop this way, you have your magnetic field that way, it's gonna be acted upon by a torque. A torque. Even though a force is this way, another force is that way, you see the total force is zero, but not the torque. Okay, the torque will be uh, providing a twist. So here you have a torque, you have a spring, and that's how back then we were able to measure uh, how much current was flowing. So that was before the age of electronics. You have a coil here. Okay, and what is that? What can we do with that? Okay, so first, typical on test number three, because I just did it, uh, which way it's gonna rotate? So the best way to do it is you take your right hand. So I, I cannot see here, you have to right hand. So uh, do you see this is, this is your loop? So this is the area. So in that case, it's a rectangle. You take your right hand, so the, the current is flowing this way. So it's gonna go that way, do you agree? Is it happy? That loop, is it happy? Is it aligned with the magnetic field? Uh-uh, right? So it's going to rotate, rotate, such as it will align itself with the magnetic field. That will be your north, that will be your south. This is your magnetic dipole. Is that clear? So right now you have um, uh, this way, you see? The loop is this way. The magnetic dipole is that way, so it's going to rotate that way. Right? Are you with me? Very important. So it's going to rotate that way. Um, where I am? Here. It's going to rotate that way. Uh, this way. So it wants to rotate that way. Okay. Now, if, if, if that is, it, it will be stuck, right? If I don't cut the current, okay, it will be stuck here because now it's happy. So it rotates. And then it's stuck. However, if I find a way to cut the current, all of a sudden there is no magnetic field. So because of inertia, it will keep spinning. So what is it that we have made here? So it wants to align itself with the magnetic field, but I stop the current. You see, you have brushes here. What do we call that? Something that spin, that is used. Uh, Start with a M, 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 a motor. It's a motor. It's an electric motor. And uh, I, I, I lost my loop, so here. How do you get around, like, if I have the right hand loop and I have current pointing up, I mean, I have any direction I can point the force. Uh, yeah, but so it's, it's hard to tell. Yeah, it's hard to tell. So that, that's why it's, it's, you don't want to do it this way. You can do it this way. So you see there is a magnetic force here and magnetic force there. So here is a torque, like you are um, driving, uh, you are turning a wheel. But it's hard. It's easier to think like this. If the current is going this way and the magnetic field from north to south, it will rotate in such a way to align itself with the magnetic field. Use that first ring. It's the first, the, this one is easier because you know that your thumb here is the north. So it wants to align itself with the magnetic field. If you, you can think like that with the force, but it's harder. So here I have a magnet. So you can build those uh, um, uh, extra credit. If you build an electric motor, you have a lot of tutorial. I can give you extra credit, but I don't know if you can see, this is a magnet and here it says north, right? Do you agree? Here, I'm going to have a power supply connected, and here I have a loop. You see? So when the current is flowing, okay, so let's say the current is flowing, so you have a, you have a, let's say the current is flowing in this direction, so the north is this way. Do you agree? And the north here is there, so it's going up. 
So it will rotate in such a way to align itself with the magnetic field. Do you agree? And here there is a trick that you cannot see. But if you don't do it, your motor is not going to work. Here is only, a, I, I put a sandpaper, but only half of it. So at that point, it's going to lose contact. So it's going to keep going. And then again, it's going to push, be pushed, right? So let's see if it works. You have many ways. Oh man. Oh, it's already 11. You see? Isn't that cool? So nothing's inside the dust. Hi. So, yeah, it's an electric motor. So, it, uh, it will be, the torque will be proportional to the amount of current to the area of the loop. And uh, what else? The area of, ah, and the number of loops. And I wanted to show you another. At what time is the book, Chris? I was going to say, you left me for a long time. It says 12.05. It says 12.05. Oh, 12.05, sorry. Okay, so let, 